Hello amigos, this is Pablo Garcia, the engineer photographer. A couple of years ago, my wife and I were on vacation at Banff National Park in Canada. And one early morning, I went to this beautiful lake, to Jack Lake, and I took this image. I really like the simplicity of the image, the big boulders here in the foreground, and the really nice reflection of the trees and the mountain in the lake. To create this effect, I use a wide angle lens at 17 millimeters and also a very long exposure at almost four minutes in duration uh, to get a very still water. And this is the result of the edit that I did in Lightroom. A couple of months ago, I was playing with Nick Color Effects and I did another version of the image and I end up liking this version even more. I like the colors, the magenta in the mountain, the deeper blues, and overall I was a lot happier. But there were a couple of things that were bothering me. One of them is that the trees are leaning out and that's the result of not only using the wide angle lens, but also pointing the lens down on the boulders so that the boulders will look bigger on the image, but the end result is that the far objects like the trees are leaning to the outside. And I need to be able to correct that. And the other effect of the wide angle is that I remember the mountain being a lot bigger. You know, the problem with wide angle lenses is far objects are gonna look smaller on the image. So those two things were bothering me. I thought I could fix this image in Lightroom, but unfortunately Lightroom doesn't give good results. If I use the guided transform, I'm gonna click on guided. I'm gonna draw a line here on this tree. I'm gonna draw another line on another one of the trees here. You see, it corrects the image. The trees are now vertical but I end up with a lot of empty space and what I have to do is then crop the image to fit and I don't like this composition at all. Now the boulders are touching the edges of the image and that's not what I wanted at all. And that's when I remember a suggestion by my friend Jeff of a video by the Photoshop expert, Sean Bakshaw in which he had used Photoshop Transform to correct for wide angle distortion. I tried it out, it gave me very good results and I was able to create this other image. As you can see, now the trees are vertical. I maintained the boulders and I, in addition, I was able to increase the size of the mountain a bit. So let me show you how I did that in Photoshop. Well, here we are in Photoshop and let me show you step by step what I want to do. The first thing is we need to duplicate the background layer. So select background layer, right click, duplicate layer. And now we have a copy of the background. It's good to keep the background because we may need it later. So it's better just to play it safe and make a copy of it. Next step is we need to do control or command on an Apple, control T that enters the free transform. And up here on the top, you see this little icon. We're gonna click on that icon and we're gonna enter warp mode. One of the advantages of the transfer in the warp mode is that now we can split the image with these icons that we have here. And I'm gonna select this one and basically allows me to bring a line, a horizontal line to an area that I want to use as a reference or lock it basically. I'm gonna keep that. And now all I have to do is I'm gonna select the upper left corner, move it in. And you see how I'm fixing the tree. Just get it to the point where it looks vertical to you. I'm gonna go to the other corner on the right and do the same. And now very easily we corrected the trees. And now we need to correct for the reflections. But if I move this bottom corner out, I end up affecting the boulders too. So I don't want to do that. I'm gonna undo. The nice thing about the free transform tool is I can 
create another line. So I'm going to go back and bring another line. And now I'm going to put it right here at the tip of the trees. And I'm going to use now this point to stretch out. I do get some warping of the boulders and I'm going to be keeping an eye on them. I still want them to look natural. But as you can see, the bottom boulders are almost not being affected. I'm going to do the other side. Let's say that looks pretty even. Now, I told you I also wanted to extend the mountain. So I'm going to go to the top line. And you can click and raise the top a bit. Not much, but raise the top a bit. And overall, this is looking very good. All I have to do now is click the check mark and basically agree to the changes. And now it has been transformed. I'm going to turn off the background layer. And as you can see, this is the area that we pushed in. We had also pushed out a few areas here on the bottom. But this is the area that got pushed in. Now we have to fill it. And to do that, we're going to use Content Aware Fill. But first, we have to select it. So what we're going to do is do Control and click on the layer. And now we have selected the pixels on the image. We want the inverse. We want to select the non-pixel areas. So now we do Control Shift I, and basically we inverted the selection. Okay. So now we only have that areas. Next step is we want to grow the selection for Content Aware Fill to work the best. It needs to have a little bit of the image selected. So we go under Select, Modify expand and you can use a number anywhere between 5 and 10 pixels let's select 8 pixels select ok and the selection grew a little bit into the image next step is content aware fill you go under edit content aware fill we're going to select automatic we'll see what it does and we can see what it did in these areas if you want to make it even better, the green areas here are the areas that the tool selected for borrowing uh, texture or color. I'm going to deselect the bottom. We don't need the boulders and rocks at all. Is recalculating and I think in the overall it did a very nice job you can see it here now I'm gonna select apply or OK and there it is so this is the new space area that it added so overall it did a very nice job I'm gonna deselect now you can inspect it did a good job in this area and over here, you can see it didn't do as good as a job. So if I zoom in in that area, we can see that it didn't deal well with that piece of pine tree. We have a couple of options. One of them is we could use the clone stamp tool and maybe clone that out. And you get the idea we can you know spend a little time and work to get a good result and a good blend okay that's one option another option we can do is to do it all over again so i'm going to erase what we did we're back here i'm going to select this area right here so control click control shift i and now I'm going to grow the selection a little more. Select, modify, expand. I may go something like 30 pixels, you know, get it to get more into this area here. Select OK. And now we're going to do edit, content aware fill. It's calculating. I'm going to erase this area here. 
I think it's doing a good job. Now I'm going to select OK. Deselect. Well, we didn't necessarily do a much better job, but you know, I can go and, like I told you before, I can go use the clone stamp tool and just clone this area out. And, you know, with a little bit of patience, you can get very good results. And now here you have the image and we were able to make the trees vertical. We're able to grow the mountain a bit while keeping the perspective of the boulders. Overall, I think a very nice result applying this technique. I hope you liked this video. If you're liking them, give me a thumbs up, send me a comment, give me some ideas, suggestions of where you like to see in future videos, and see you next time.